Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar on analysing absence and attendance data. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Adam Luke and I lead the school attendance policy and strategy team at the Department for Education. Um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we hope you find the contents of this presentation uh, useful and that you continue to engage with uh, any future webinars uh, and the previous ones in this series are all available uh, on gov.uk if you missed any uh, and as with those webinars we'll be recording today's session uh, and we'll be sharing that on gov.uk as well. Uh, we've allocated some time at the end today uh, after our speakers for a short Q&A uh, so as we go along through the webinar you can submit any questions that you might have uh, in the chat bar on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, and as always, we would value your feedback uh, at the end of the session and we'll have the feedback uh, form, a link to the feedback form uh, in the chat bar. Super, next slide, please. Um, as participants hopefully now know, back in May, uh, the department published new guidance working together to uh, improve school attendance and that came into force at the beginning of the school year. Uh, it sets out in that document uh, clearer expectations around uh, what schools, trusts and local authorities uh, are expected to do to improve attendance support for pupils and help them back into school. Uh, effective use of data, as anyone who's read the document will know, uh, is woven throughout the guidance, uh, both at the strategic level uh, to help schools decide where to focus improvement efforts and at the individual pupil level to help put better and more targeted support in place as early as is possible uh, when the patterns of poor attendance start to uh, emerge uh, in the data. And the first chunk of those expectations on the screen now uh, is around regular analysis of the attendance and absence data that you've got, using that to identify uh, the pupils and the groups of pupils, the cohorts of pupils uh, that need help. Uh, and using the information that you learn from that uh, to put the most effective strategies in place uh, that you can. And that's because, as we all know, uh, poor attendance is habitual. It's a symptom uh, of, of a wider issue in a family uh, and therefore uh, prevention and early intervention of that is absolutely crucial to, to overcoming it and treating the root cause. Um, so there's an expectation in that new guidance then uh, that all schools regularly analyse attendance data. Uh, they use that to identify the immediate additional support that pupils need, uh, but they also think about uh, the, the strategies that may come from more historic trends uh, and, and patterns that you can see in that data and thinking a bit more uh, in terms of the future as well, looking at what sort of patterns might be emerging and thinking about uh, what you can put in place as early as possible to try and stop uh, those from becoming uh, attendance problems further down the line. Uh, so that's, as I say, the regular monitoring on a weekly basis. Uh, and you should always try and go beyond uh, the headline percentages, uh, drill down into individual year groups, uh, pupil uh, groups uh, that, that, that you've got in your school community. Uh, some schools, especially at secondary level, uh, might want to delve further uh, into those patterns and see if you can see anything uh, that can be learned uh, within sessions, uh, perhaps uh, about whether pupils are attending all of the timetables uh, lessons within the session. Uh, and you should then use that analysis to uh, not only think about your strategic work, but operationally as well in terms of your follow up and day to day processes, which you all know. But giving that data to um, uh, class teachers, to tutors uh, to help facilitate their discussions and giving that data to, to school leaders and, and, and people in the school governance chain to help think uh, strategically across the school community. Um, so that's weekly, uh, but in terms of half term, uh, term and full year, it's also worth looking at the data uh, in those uh, time periods and thinking more about the patterns that emerge over a longer period, uh, whether they're around use of certain codes or certain days that you see uh, growth in, 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 in absence uh, and thinking about through looking at those uh, termly and, and, and yearly figures where you can benchmark to local, national and regional data, thinking about how that can help show you where you perhaps focus the efforts and the resource that you've got. Uh, and as always with these things, it's up to individual schools based on your context about how you design that data analysis and what groups you look at. 
um, and, and, and tracking your data. But the sorts of things that you might want to think about are uh, differences between boys and girls, uh, difference between year groups, difference between pupils with special education needs and disabilities, uh, those with social workers perhaps, eligibility for free school meals. Uh, and then most importantly, the one people forget, I think really is uh, pupils from, from backgrounds within the school community that have historically had lower attendance, uh, whether that's a part of the catchment area, whether that is uh, a certain uh, ethnic group, uh, whether that is pupils who uh, use school transport, whatever it might be, groups that you look back at and you see historically there, there, there is poorer attendance in those uh, groups. Next slide, please. Um, and our speakers are going to say a lot about this today, but it's also just worth stressing at the outset, really, that this process is never finished. Uh, it's a continuous process. And when I'm out and about in schools, sometimes they see it as a yearly process. Well, it, it has to be continuous to make it effective, really. So you should also be using um, the data that you've got to monitor and check back on progress on any of those actions that you might have put in place, again, both at pupil level and at cohort level. Has what you did as a result of what you found out last month or last week or last term um, actually had an impact on those groups? And do we need to tweak uh, and change what we do uh, in, in, in response to what we're starting to now see in the data? Uh, and it should also, as I've said, uh, be built into the governance that you've got. So governors, so that trustees understand those patterns and trends. Don't just give them the headline figures, show them what sits underneath of that and they can help you in the thinking uh, and the conversations about where you can best join up and, and focus your approach. They can also obviously help you with those evaluation uh, processes. Next slide, please. Uh, and just finally, before I do uh, pass on to the first of today's speakers, it's also really uh, important to remember that whilst the data is, is crucial for you at school level, in operational processes and in, in focusing efforts, it's also a, a central part of any multi-agency effort uh, to support a family and, and to improve attendance. Uh, and schools of all types, uh, local authorities and other local partners in the area are expected to be working together. That's the, 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 the real ethos of the guidance. And data is a core part of that and free sharing and open sharing of data in that partnership is important to that, where it's in the benefits of, of the pupil and the family that you uh, are working with. Uh, local authorities and schools as part of that guidance are expected to sit down termly uh, as part of what we're calling a targeted support meeting uh, to look at the data and to decide which pupils uh, the need to be joint actions that go beyond the school gate uh, on and putting those in place. Uh, and to make all of that happen, really, um, uh, all schools are expected to provide access to register information to their local authority. Uh, maintained schools obviously have a legal duty to. Uh, uh, other types of schools are still expected to in, in, in the guidance. Um, and that's uh, alongside the legal requirement for, for all types of school uh, to share information with the local authority when uh, pupils aren't attending regularly or when they're added to or taken off the school register. To make all of that sort of thing easier, uh, the department is trialling a cost and burden free uh, way to transfer that information via a secure data aggregator. Uh, and all schools uh, are encouraged to sign up to that during the, the voluntary phase uh, to help shape its development. And I think that probably is the perfect moment to hand over to uh, my colleague Caroline Kempner uh, from the department's data director to say a little bit more about that and to show you about some of the features there that, that, that that's got. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I think we might have gone the wrong way on the slides. If you could go on to the next slide, please. There, that's brilliant. Thank you. So my name is Caroline Kempner and I'm heading up the project to improve and automate the flow of uh, pupil attendance data between schools, local authorities, MATS and the department. So just a little bit of context first. Um, through the process of the pandemic and um, through the introduction of the EDSET form, which obviously is no longer with us, we uh, in, in, in the department learned how important it is to have a much more up to date and almost real time picture of attendance. And as a result of that and of the uh, decline in attendance rates, we've started this trial to look at how we can um, in a burden free way automate this daily feed of pupil level attendance data. 
We've done this really rapidly. We started this project in January and an amazing 70% of schools have voluntarily signed up to participate. So a huge thank you to those schools who have. What we were really keen to put in place very quickly was a way of feeding that data back to you and to local authorities and RATS in a, in a very sort of interactive way uh, so that you can have access to tools that will help you monitor attendance and take action. So our priority when we were doing this was to get the first iteration of those reports back out to you before the end of the summer term last year, which is what we've done. Um, what I'm going to show you in a moment is what those reports now look like. Uh, and although we've got um, a fantastic over 70% of schools now who've, who are participating in sharing data with us, we've got a lot of schools who aren't yet using those reports. So I'm hoping that by showing you the sorts of things you can get, that will encourage you to have a look at those reports for yourself and to see if they will help you monitor and improve attendance. As part of this work, we were very clear that we needed to do a number of things. We need to be clear with you how we were going to use the data and be very uh, careful about the security of the data and things like data protection. So we have published on gov.uk a data privacy notice, a data protection impact assessment and details of how the data you're sharing with us will be used by DfE uh, and by partners. So, for example, we have said that if you're a school, um, the local authority your school is in will have access to the data that you send us in the sorts of reports that you see. And if you're a multi academy trust, you will have access to the data for the schools in your trust for those who are participating. It's worth noting that we do see this kind of automation as a, 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 the first test really of a possible blueprint for wider improvements longer term. So, so we have two products that we've produced so far. One is a, a secure reporting tool for you to view your data, which is refreshed daily. Uh, and the second is a fortnightly publication of national, regional and local authority attendance rates. And the link to that, and in fact, the link to all of this information is in the chat pane, the Q&A pane, which you should be able to access. Next slide, please. So how difficult is this for you, to do for you and what benefits are there for you? So I think really importantly, the way that we've done it is you literally have to have a look at um, what it is we're asking you to do and through our data aggregator partner WAND all you have to do is press a button to say yes I agree to share my data. What that then means is that every day once a day um, in the afternoon the information is extracted from your management information system there's a agreed set of data on uh, pupil attendance and some pupil characteristics and we're very clear um, and we've published what exact data you share every day um, and then that will automatically happen. You don't need to do anything further. Importantly, you can also opt out of this data sharing at any time. By doing that, you are um, providing us with this automated flow of data and then we provide back to you on a daily basis, a refreshed set of reports, which I'll show you in a moment, that will be a tool for you to identify pupils who need support earlier in the way that was being described earlier. Um, we've also got information in there about numbers of persistently absent pupils, numbers of missed sessions, number of days since last absence for an individual pupil. And actually today we've just added some new functionality for severe absence. So I would stress when I show you the reports that this is really the, the sort of first or second, in fact, it's the second iteration of the reports that you will see. And what's really, really important to us is that we are getting, we're doing user research all the time. We're interested in your feedback. We would like you to sign up to participate uh, in, in helping us uh, improve the report so they, they give you what you need uh, to improve attendance. The items we're collecting are a subset of those that 
you provide to us and have provided to us for many years through the Termly Census collection. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, um, local authorities and MATS, if applicable, will have access to the data as well. Um, and that will allow them to fulfill their roles and responsibilities um, and to support you um, in improving attendance. Next slide, please. So what I'm going to show you now um, is um, a flavour of what the reports look like for schools. And these are accessed through a secure sign-on mechanism um, and we have guidance on how to, to access that. Next slide, please. So when you first um, go on to the reporting page, this is the landing page, this is what you'll see. And obviously for this purpose, this, in a, this is an anonymised school. So there's some information here about um, what you can see. And there are two broad uh, types of reports, one for uh, attendance for all the pupils in your school and the second for individual pupils attendance. And then there's a whole sort of guidance and support area which tells you about the reports. It's got a glossary, it's got definitions, it allows you to give feedback and it allows you to report any problems that you find. So first of all, and actually very, very sort of uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll be able to see in quite small letters as there's, there's tabs and that shows you sort of where you are. So what we're going to do now is look at the next tab, which is about uh, what the data looks like if you look at your whole school attendance. Next slide, please. So this is quite a busy slide because there's, um, so this is a, 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 an actual example of what you'd get if this was, you were looking at your school's data. Um, you can see on the top right hand corner, there's something that tells you when the data was last updated, uh, in this case, 27th of October, but that is refreshed daily. Um, this is data for the current academic year. Uh, the the first headline set of figures across the top give you the number of pupils and the overall attendance rate in your school and the number of persistently absent pupils and their attendance rate. The second row uh, in the first instance shows exactly the same numbers and that's because what you have under that is a series of filters. So you've got gender, ethnicity, uh, persistently absent or not, year group, um, and various vulnerable child indicators. So what you can then do is filter on any combination of these to drill down and have a look at uh, any of the sorts of groups that were being talked about earlier. Uh, and then underneath that, you have um, a uh, information about the individual pupils um, uh, and their, uh, their characteristics and their attendance rates. So in this case, obviously we're looking at the whole school. But then if you filter on a group, you'll see that those numbers change. Next slide, please. So on this slide, you'll see that the that second row of headline figures at the top have changed and we've now got 283 uh, pupils showing. And that's because what we're doing here, if you look at the filters row, is we're just looking at pupils in year eight. Uh, and obviously it is then possible to sort of drill down further and further and further um, so that different people in the school can look at, at different groups of, of uh, pupils. Next slide, please. This is an example of looking at an individual pupil's attendance. So you see that the, the format of this is quite different. And what we're doing here is looking uh, at the top of the page at the overall attendance of that pupil and the number of days they've missed in part or in full, and the number of days since they were last absent. You've also obviously got information there about their, uh, their characteristics, and then you've got different ways of viewing their attendance. So you've got um, a graphical format where you can choose to look at their attendance in the last week, the last six weeks, or academic year to date. And then on the right-hand side, you've got things in a more tabular form, where you can look at actual attendance codes for the last two weeks um, or their weekly attendance in a bit more detail for the last six weeks. So there are different ways that you can look at either an individual pupil's attendance or 
uh, whole school attendance or attendance for particular groups of pupils. Next slide, please. Uh, in addition, uh, in September, we introduced um, some new functionality because obviously we needed to provide information about uh, this current academic year compared to previous ac academic year school attendance so that you can look back and see uh, what the position is either for the school as a whole or for individual pupils. So you, again, you can see at the top, you've got the ability to filter by year group and gender ethnicity and, and, and uh, vulnerable child characteristics. Um, and then you've got information uh, in this case for the whole school, because we haven't done any filtering yet, um, for uh, attendance uh, rates for different terms last academic year and then uh, in the autumn term this year. Next slide, please. Uh, and then this is showing the similar sort of information but for an individual pupil. So we've got an individual pupils would have their name um, and then we would have their attendance for the different terms last year and for the term this year. So there's a lot of different information in these reports and um, as our next speaker will talk about, it's actually not about the data, it's about the action you take as a result of having the data. Um, so th this is very much a tool um, for you to explore um, what's going on with attendance uh, amongst different groups of pupils in your school. And we are, as I said, we're continuing to refine this and we would very much welcome people signing up to help us improve these reports. Next slide, please. So this is some of the um, feedback we've had from people about the reports. Um, so, for example, on the left, uh, and this shows you all the different sort of people, obviously, who might be interested in using this sort of data. Um, so we've got one person saying, you know, I can see these patterns in my own MIS, but I really like the clarity here. So so one sort of uh, set of feedback is, you know, although people do have access to this, sometimes people don't have a very sophisticated way of looking at this data or it's quite time consuming for them to pull this data together. So this can be useful for people. Um, some people are saying very positive things about this and the importance of having live data for educational welfare lead at a local authority. Uh, people are saying they would like to be able to make comparisons between their school uh, and other schools. Um, so, so that's really positive feedback. Um, we know that there are new features that people are interested in. We'd love to hear your feedback. Next slide, please. So as I said, we're continuing, always uh, striving to improve uh, the features on this. Um, where are, there are feedback forms and we'd love to talk to you if you'd like to leave us your details. Um, there are more enhancements coming and more in the pipeline. We know that some users have had some difficulty accessing their reports. So we have um, set out how to access your reports in a help guide and we've put the link here and we've put it in the Q&A. One thing that I would say is that uh, it's obviously new for us as well, drawing data directly from schools uh, management information systems. And we uh, are always looking at data quality and we know that schools change their codes sort of sometime after the actual sort of day. And we've taken that into account, as you'll see when we publish information. Um, Sometimes we found that schools are using sort of custom codes, non-DFE codes, and so that can affect what people see in the reports. So we're working and looking at how to solve this kind of issue. Next slide, please. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you is the sort of the public publication of this information. And um, there's a link again in the Q&A, which you can have a look at. Um, so I'm just going to show you two screenshots. Um, next slide, please. So um, I can't really stress how sort of transformational having this data is for us in the department to have access uh, in almost real time to um, what, what's happening on attendance in schools. And uh, an illustration of this is, um, you know, all that, the wealth of information that you send us 
uh, resulted in the one number that you can see there that we were able to publish on the 8th of September. So a couple of days after schools were fully back um, at the beginning of the academic year, and we were able to understand what was happening with attendance uh, in primary schools, secondary schools and special schools. Um, that was really important for us and a huge advancement in, in timeliness and transparency for us. Uh, next slide, please. What we've then been doing, and this is really important for us to, to be more transparent and to improve the way we're feeding data back to the sector, is since the 29th of September, every fortnight, we are publishing a dashboard which you can access on, on uh, gov.uk, where you can look at national, regional and local authority attendance rates. Uh, we are adding functionality to that all the time, and that is we hope uh, useful for you as well as for sort of the public because you, that is where you can find <coughs> comparators that you can look at to compare your school with. Uh, I think that's enough from me and I'd really like to hand over now uh, to uh, our colleague from Star Academy. Thank you very much. Uh, afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Ian Hemingway. I'm the uh, Attendance Improvement Lead for Star Academies. Uh, I'd just like to say, first of all, that there's some fantastic developments there and, and I've, I have been using them already, particularly uh, the comparison between the the the, uh, the LA contacts and the national contacts has been really, really helpful. So thank you to the DFE for, uh, for, for, for preparing that information. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the emphasis for me today really is on looking at attendance data, but looking on how we use it to make a difference. Um, so I do, first of all, uh, in terms of the objectives, I want to stress the importance of culture as opposed to strategy, because we talk about strategy a lot, and I'll explain that why in a, in a moment. I, I, I would encourage schools not just to wear the pig, and I will explain that a little bit if you've not heard that adage before. Um, to monitor and analyse those trends and patterns from day one of the first very first day back at school. I've, I do fully realise we're now in November, but I'm thinking now already of next September because those first few days and weeks are absolutely critical for establishing um, some, some patterns of attendance. Uh, I think it was Adam earlier on that really emphasised early intervention and I would absolutely support that. The longer and more entrenched attendance issues become, the harder they are to resolve. So getting there early and make a difference early is, is really critical. Uh, the importance of going beyond the headline data, again, Adam, Adam uh, sort of re made, made a reference to how you need to drill down. In terms of attendance data about giving people the right data and the appreciation that we've got more than one audience, so, so what we call it the sort of Goldilocks principle of using attendance data. Uh, and then about uh, the, the, the very most important um, issue is how action needs to underpin strategy. So those are the sort of areas that we'll talk through in a little bit more detail. Um, next slide, please. So first of all, I'm going to quote Peter Drucker, who said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And I would 100%, 100% um, fully support that statement. What's really, really important, young people attend school when they feel safe, they feel valued, they feel inspired, they feel that they are being successful. So quite often we, we sort of spend a lot of energy trying to get pupils across the threshold and, and then it's not really just about that, it's about then keeping them in. So it's about the culture of school, it's about the welcoming, it's about the relationships between peers and the relationships between the staff and the pupils. And all those developments in behaviour, in safeguarding, teaching and learning, the school environment itself and enrichment activities, they all make a contribution to improving attendance. Um, and you, again, attendance, I think Adam said this earlier, is, is a symptom. It's like a temperature check of what's happening in, in, in the school at that point. Uh, and, if, and if we get all those elements right, 
what we'll see is the vast majority of young people, not all, but the vast majority of young people will want to come to school and they will have very, very good attendance throughout the whole year. There'll always be exceptions because we know there'll be some of those family circumstances that work against good attendance that we need to look at. Uh, next slide, please. So just, uh, you may well have heard this before, really nothing new in any of this, but it is something that has sort of anchored my thought process for many, many years. And that's that what I often see in schools is the generation of lots and lots of attendance data and information, and that being shared quite well, generally speaking. But then there's never really any action that comes from uh, that process. So it's the, 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 the adage here is that you, you know, if a farmer wants to get the, the most value for their livestock, um, they need to feed the pig, not just weigh the pig every week. If they weigh the pig every week, it will just be the same pig. But what we need to do is change something. We need to add something into the equation to make it different. And attendance is exactly the same. So, you know, we don't just spend our time generating the data. And, you know, some of the things I've seen today and, and, and sort of looked at and explored myself over the last couple of weeks that the DFE have produced, they're making that easier for you to actually quickly drill down and see where your issues are. And, and then the key is then we do something about it. You know, when action meets analysis, that's when we really start to win. OK, next slide, please. So I mentioned earlier about the importance of getting off to a really, really good start. Uh, it's a lesson that I've, I've been in this role in Star Academies now for about five years. And it's a lesson that 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 has, has stood out more and more each year, the how much we need to be ready for the beginning of term. And I, I say to our schools that in that those first few days, we need to have additional trained administration staff because we're going to know, we know what we're going to face. And that's that a lot of young people will have moved area, will have moved schools without telling us. There'll be misunderstandings about when, they, when term starts. There'll be uniform issues. And what we need to do is to play detective and resolve things really, really quickly. And I found the Children's Commission research around that first week fascinating. And the fact that actually the first day, you normally think, well, maybe that's a good indicator. The first day of what attendance is going to be like for the rest of the year. And I guess in some ways it, it is. But actually the uh, what the research was telling us that in terms of looking at those young people that are likely have to have very poor attendance. So perhaps 45 percent absence plus or the equivalent of 31 days across a term, it's actually the second day and the third day and the fourth day that are much better predictors of that. And that's because a young person has, has sort of dipped their toes in the water and thought, mm, maybe this isn't for me, and then not attended that second or third day. And that tells us there's something not quite right in that, you know, in that scenario, that young person's not coping um, with what, what, what that school offer is at that particular time. Um, again, just to emphasise that, so st straight away uh, in, in terms of that first week back, we're thinking of in, in star schools, we're thinking, you know, let, let's take a look at those young people. They're not in for that second, third, you know, if school started on a Monday, they're not in on Tuesday, not in on Wednesday. Let's take a look. But let's use all the available uh, intelligence that we've got to look at early intervention. Next slide, please. So although it's the although it's the start of uh, uh, the start of a year, we've actually got lots of information. If it's year seven, for example, in a secondary school, we've got transfer uh, transfer records, so we already know what the attendance was like prior to uh, starting at their secondary school. Uh, if it's not, if it's uh, any other year group, um, you know, bar barring nursery, uh, th then we've got all the last year's attendance that gives us a wealth of information about what the current trends and patterns are likely to be based on what happened last year. Not unless something's changed significantly, that pattern you would expect will, will just continue unless they, 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 there's, some, uh, there's something in there that, that has actually switched and changed. 
Um, and, and then, as I say, we've got what happens in that first week. So what I would say is, you know, look really carefully at that first week and act really, really quickly. That said, thinking about the, the whole year and thinking about um, the weeks within the year, as an organisation, we know, for example, that we need to think ahead about the holiday pattern because we need to arrange our um, holiday pattern for many of our schools around the Eid celebrations. If our schools are open during the Eid celebrations, we're going to have very, very poor attendance on those days. So we build that into our holiday pattern and, 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 and we're thinking ahead. We also know, and I'm, I'm sure you guys see this all, all the time, is that the end of term, we will see a significant drop in attendance. And therefore, we have to think, how do we, how, what can we do to try and minimise that? We're never going to get rid of it completely because some of that is, is families going off on holiday earlier and you sort of uh, attaching a holiday to um, a half term period or to, a, you know, to the to the to the holiday period, to the school holiday period. Um, but what we can do is try and make the end of term as enjoyable um, to add some intrigue in there. So, for example, we do things uh, around the, the pupils know there's going to be something that's funny or enjoyable. But they don't know exactly what it's going to be. And the only way they're going to find out is actually to be there. So we try and add a little form or some fear of missing out into that equation about those, those last days uh, of, of, of the school term before a holiday. And it's always nice to have a little bit of fun before before we break up anyway. Next slide, please. So in terms of monitoring, the, just an example of some of the monitoring that we do, this is sort of SLT level monitoring. So we're looking at the patterns of form groups, year groups, vulnerable groups, boy girl splits, ethnic, ethnicity splits, etc. So we constantly week by week, we are doing that tracking across. We don't want to overreact though to something that is explainable. So for example, if we know, for example, that we've had a chicken pox outbreak in year two in one of our primary schools, then we know that that's information that, that we've clocked. We know we're aware of it, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can do much about it. However, if there are more sustained trends uh, over time, that's the things that we really need to think uh, very carefully about how we can strategize to address those particular areas of concern. Next slide, please. OK, so. Looking at global data is fine. Headline figures is fine. You know, what's your overall school attendance? What's your PA figure? But then we have to think what makes up that figure? And clearly it's individual pupils. So we have a we have to work on a principle which is all about leaving no child behind. So we have to have that awareness that we need to drill down to the individual level. And we need to be aware of the individual level at all times. And we need to, you know, based on the principle of attendance being everybody's business, we need to have people in school that are aware and looking out for those when when attendance drops off so that we can do something about it. And that's why it's really, really key uh, to have a risk register. You might call it something different, but something that tracks an individual pupil's attendance. And I particularly like to have a system where we can marry the data with our uh, identification of barriers and then what we're doing about them, what the strategy we've got for that individual pupil. So what we need to see is um, we've been thinking about going from sort of global headline figures round down to individual pupils. I like to look at this in a sort of three tier system. So first of all, we've got the universal support for all pupils. So that's the rewards, the posters, the assemblies, the celebrations, perhaps events that we run that are around attendance. Recently, one of our schools had uh, an attendathon for charity. So the kids were enthused about coming to school because they were very keen to raise money for an organisation that they cared about and by attending that allowed them to raise that money so it gave them an extra incentive to attend so we've got to be really really creative about how we might incentivize our 
our pupils collectively. But then we've also got to realise that, you know, the universal approach isn't going to work for everybody. So we've then got to have our target support. So we've got to be able to say, well, who are the groups that we're concerned about? You know, is it the seven pupils, for example? Is it year eight? Um, is it um, young people in our school that maybe come from an Eastern European background? What, what, what is, you know, what are the key groups in our particular local context that we're worried about? And then we put in bespoke rewards, personalised mentoring, short term challenges, um, yeah, and, and the start of more intensive contact with homes, not the phone call that says, why are you absent today? You know, things that are actually digging a little bit deeper into where the barriers might be and how we might manage to overcome those barriers. And that will that will take another group of young people out of the equation that will solve the problem for for some more. But we do know we're then going to go down and we're going to need some intensive support for some of our pupils. You know, maybe a pastoral support plan or an attendance action plan, the allocation of a key worker, um, looking for more external agency support or actually just linking up better with the support that already exists because that is something, you know, something that I've learned for many years of working on a multi-agency basis is we just don't talk to each other regularly enough and in, in enough detail uh, to, to really sometimes get under the skin of problems and collectively work to resolve them. So, um, so that might be part of the equation. And as a last resort, of course, there's also, you know, potentially legal interventions that we may choose to use if we haven't got the engagement of families. We would never use those if we had if we had the engagement of families. It is an absolute last resort and it's really a leverage just to try and get families to work with us. Um, it's not about punishing families. It's, it's just about, you know, trying to uh, find another chink, another way in to, um, to to being able to explore that relationship with, with, with pupils and families so we can get to the heart of the problem. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an example of the risk register that, that we use. We have, ad we have adapted it slightly differently for this year, actually, but this is, this is an example of last year's risk register. As you can see quite clearly, yes, we, we can drill down. We've got filters for all the vulnerable groups, et cetera. But here we've got an example of a young person that had very poor attendance the previous year. That's the red column. And then we've seen an improvement. We've, we're up to orange. We're not quite where we'd want to be, but we can see that we've started an improvement. And then we've got the narrative alongside it. So we've identified the barrier actually in the previous year, which was that this young person was suffering from some anxiety. They had accessed some counselling last year. And then this process has been about understanding that situation, um, ensuring that pupil has a soft landing, linking them up with their peers, um, in, ensuring that when things go off track a little bit, we deal with that sensitively and get them back on track that we don't insist that we should be them straight back into lessons, that we can um, you, 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 we can give them some time so that, that, that they can deal with the issues that are create, causing and, and, and sort of driving that anxiety. So what we've got there is a, is, is a clear picture of improvement, but it's based on an understanding of the data, but then all the actions that have taken place to A, identify exactly what the problem was and then B, to sensitively support that young person in overcoming those problems. Um, next slide, please. In uh, our schools vary, you know, we, we've got 31 schools in Star Academies. They vary tremendously from schools that don't really have an issue at all with attendance. We've got some of the best attended schools in the country. Uh, but we, you know, when we take on some of our sponsored academies, there is a big there, there is a big challenge there uh, and, and, and some, some real work to be done. So often you do have to prioritise your resources uh, and that's about understanding your data and looking at where your best chances of having impact are acting quickly in order to do that. Um, and in exactly the same way, you probably treat your, your punctuality data in a very similar way to the way you treat your attendance data. Again, looking at those key groups, again, drilling down to individuals, again, putting strategies in place, which might 
and, and often is in schools, initial AA detention because the young person has arrived late without good reason. But then we've got to understand that if that's not, if that's not resolving the problem, it's very similar to what we would do with attendance in the fact that we're going to need a support plan, we're going to need to understand what the issues are, we're going to need to find um, the best way of supporting that young person to get them back into school on time because especially with the changes to the closing of registers we've seen an effect of that this year where closing our registers at 30 minutes because that fits with the guidance and fits with how our schools work um, but it is half an hour less than we had last year uh, so we are seeing that we've got more u codes i don't really see that as a bad thing because actually all it's saying to us is we've got some young people that are missing some key learning and it's actually made us sharper around punctuality and made us sharper in terms of trying to resolve the issues of those young people around new cards. Next slide, please. So this would be an example of some of our very similar to what we've seen in, in terms of those DFV filters. This is some of our vulnerable groups, um, some of our disadvantaged pupils, send key ethnic groups, children in care, children with social worker, etc. I would say that I do think, uh, and, and this is a general message, I think one of the um, one of the missing elements in our MIS systems is that we don't have anywhere at the moment uh, to record those young people that have a social worker. So, uh, and I, I think that is some uh, a sort of missing piece of the jigsaw. So we've got young people in care, but we've not got young people who, who, who have a social worker. And I think that's something that we, we could look at nationally so that we can track those young people much more carefully. So I'm just, I'm just throwing that, that in as a, as a suggestion and as an idea. But you can see here that we can really carefully track our young people. And I think half termly chunks are the most useful a uh, chunk of time to really get under the skin of what's happening because they are long enough that they will sort of um, iron out any anomalies like a, a, a bout of illness in a particular group for example or a particular year group um, but they are short enough to say well are we having an impact in the strategies that we've currently got in place what do we need to tweak or do we need to start again? I think, and I think if after a term you're not really seeing any progress, you need to really rethink your strategy. You know, but don't. I think sometimes what we see is that schools switch too early, so you've got to give time you have time for strategy to, to actually work and embed to be able to be certain that it's not working because strategies won't work overnight. You have to work at them, you have to tweak them. So it's that fine balance between deciding how long to stick with a with a strategy and when you might need to think and do something different. Next slide, please. OK, so the, 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 this uh, this part is about getting the amount of and content of, of the tenants data just right. So although the you know, story of, of Goldilocks and the, and the bears and, and, and that story about the porridge being too hot or the porridge being too cold, but, you know, one ball is just right. Well, that's what we need to think about when we're giving information to uh, people in our schools, giving them the right information. So the right thinking about the audience. Now, everybody in school needs the big picture, but everybody then below that needs varying levels of detail. For example, the governors need that strategic overview. Um, the young people need to know where they stand. They need to know what their attendance is on a regular basis. They need to know how that compares with the school expectation. They need to know how they're doing in terms of their form group, etc. We love friendly competition at STAR, so we've got lots of league tables going on, lots of innovative ideas around, you know, trying to, you know, have, have sort of peers working together to have the best attendance for their year group or for their form group or for their house, etc. Form tutors need to know, um, which young people to target, as do heads of years, who are probably that next layer up. Um, so it's all about providing the right information to the right people. And SLT need to have a really strong understanding, uh, understanding of their data. So we, we have a standing agenda item for SLT on attendance, understanding their attendance data on a weekly basis, 
and we would be looking for actions that are coming out of that analysis on a weekly basis so that um, we can look at rapid improvement in the areas where we need to develop and we're tracking that through very, very, very carefully all the time. Um, I, I think again, I think I've I, I said it before, it's an ongoing process. You don't do it every term, you don't do it every year and, and you know it's, it's like a constant process where you've just got points in the year where you'll have a bigger deep dive into it. Um, but actually, if your data is telling you that it's the right thing to do, you can do that deep dive any time. Um, and, and the more you drill down to the individual young people, the more you will understand what you need to do to change uh, the trend in that data. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just an example of what we give to our governors. You can see it's just totally strategic. We're giving trends over time of different sorts of absence. We've got a breakdown of our vulnerable groups. We've got um, we've got an analysis against the, the, the target and we've got compar comparisons with national data as well, where that exists. I think this might have been a COVID, uh, a COVID example when data was a little bit more trickier to come by, but normally we would have uh, any appropriate national comparisons also in, in that dashboard. Uh, next slide, please. OK, I think I've already mentioned most of this, but I'll just say, say one more time. It's give strategy time to work, but don't be afraid to tweak. And also, if the strategy clearly isn't working over time, at some point you've got to change tack and say it's not working. We need to think again. We need to do something different. Um, half term blocks and term loop blocks are about the right sort of checking points to decide whether your strategy is actually on track or not and where it's doing what you want it to do. Next slide, please. Yeah, so again, that's on that's on a, a, a sort of group, but on a whole school basis, on a targeted group basis, a vulnerable group basis. But here you can see how we do it on an individual basis. So this is our another similar risk register that we have. But this time you can see that we're tracking from half term to half term. And as you can see, we've seen success here because we've got red on the left hand side and it's turning pink and then it's turning orange and hopefully it will then turn yellow. So what we're seeing here is that the strategies that we're putting in place are having impact. If it was red, 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 it means the strategies aren't working and we need to do more. We need to escalate it more quickly. We need to do something else. Next slide, please. So. I thought it would be useful just to give an example of a data led strategy. Um, so I've, I've taken Friday attendance um, and, and certainly from our analysis, what we generally see in most of our schools is that Friday attendance is lower than the rest of the week. Um, and therefore, um, what we would do is after we've got a reasonable amount of data, let's say we've got HT1 data, we would then do an analysis. Now we want it to be significant, this analysis. So we'd pick some sort of threshold like 0.5% lower on a Friday morning than it is the rest of the week on a morning. Um, and that would give us a group of kids. However, after one's quite a short period of time. So we want to know we really have the right group of people that we're going to intervene with. So we'd then look at the previous year's data. And we would marry up the young people that had below half a percent lower this year, below half a percent last year, because that's clearly a continuous trend over time. We would then, for all of those young people, on a targeted level, so we've now gone from looking at global data to targeted data, we would send all of those parents where that's an issue a letter explaining that pattern of attendance, school expectations, etc. We would then drill down even further. Um, that letter would perhaps make a difference with some families, improve Friday attendance for some pupils, but we'd then drill down further and say, well, where is it most affecting our, um, our data? It might be year nine, it might be disadvantaged, it might be send pupils. So we would then drill down even further and we might, for example, send a Thursday PM text to see the idea of attending on Friday to that targeted group, which is smaller than the group that got the letters. 
And that's going to get rid of, you know, that's going to improve attendance on Friday for even more pupils. We then drill down even further and we look for a core group where at those first two strategies haven't worked. And we do something called wakey wakey calls, which is an early Friday morning call uh, before school starts, just to say, just ring in to see if, you, you know, just ring in to see if Sam's on his way, et cetera. Is there any problems today? Is there anything we can, any way that we can help? So again, we, we are going to clear up another group of young people. So you can imagine almost like a pyramid and, and it's standing on its pointy end and we get into we get into less and less pupils. And then eventually, obviously, we've got our persistent offenders and that's we're going to hold the meetings, create an action plan, look at some legal uh, some legal issues, etc. And what we do then, we pick another um, data led issue, which might be, for example, an, an ethnic group that not attending as well. And we do a similar process. Start with the data, drill down, put strategies in place, drill down again, drill down again, drill down again, strategy at every level until we get where we want to be. Um, next slide, please. Now, I'm not going to go through these um, these next two slides in a detail, just to say that um, we looked at what what uh, priorities and what issues, what actions that were taken were particularly effective in our best performing schools around attendance. And we ended up with 16 priority actions that we expect all our schools to do. What was really interesting when I went through these is that 15 out of the 16 actions were all led by data and all involved robust, routine, vigorous action. And actually, I could swap in probably, I could probably swap five or six of these priority actions for five or six other things and we'd still see really good attendance at these schools. But there would still be about action based on data analysis. It's action, action, action based on valid and legitimate data that will make a difference. Thank you very much for listening. Super, thank you. Thank you, Ian. That's uh, incredibly useful and informative for everyone, I'm sure. And particularly this point on bringing alive really what I was saying earlier about making use of that data at individual and cohort level action uh, meet analysis and not just counting uh, the problem when the pig whatever the phrase was it, it, it's putting that into practice using that to do things um uh, really insightful i'm sure to colleagues uh, we're very short on time but i we've got lots of questions which i know uh, caroline and her team have been diligently uh answering in the in the chat some of the technical ones uh, could i just ask you one question caroline on the on the data which came up quite a lot for people which i think is useful uh, it, it's a two-part really uh, is there a cost to it uh, and how do people go about signing up if they haven't already yeah sure so no there's no cost to it so no there's no cost additional cost to you in terms of sharing your data because it's data you already have uh, in your MIS system. Um, we have a contract with one, so we're paying for them to extract you know, that data from your management information system. And then in terms of the reports that you get back, you no, know, that's a free service from DFE. So that's the first part. Um, sorry, remind me what the second part was. How, to, how would someone go about signing up? Oh yes, so I've put we've put that um, in the chat. Um, you uh, contact support at wand.com. Super, thanks, Caroline. And then just two for you, uh, um, Ian, if that's OK. Uh, one around um, uh, that came up around what sort of software you use to, to develop your reports or uh, what program on the computer you use for your reports uh, to governors and such. Yeah, we, we actually use Power BI to uh, develop our reports. Super, thank you. And then the other is just about what the, the sort of resource looks like in the trust. You were the lead attendance officer. Do, do schools have their own individual ones? Uh, how, how do you staff it, basically? Yeah, so we're, we're a big trust, so we've got 31 schools. Uh, so I work for the central team uh, and therefore I work in terms of um, developing the overall strategy and supporting schools in the, in the implementation of that strategy. It works a little bit, a lot of the time it works a little bit like a help desk where, where schools will have um, a query and they will they will uh, contact me and we'll resolve that together. So some of it, it, it can be a very much at a strategic level, 
or it might be down to actually how we deal with an individual family. Uh, it, it, it's it's right right across the board. But I also do uh, sort of materials. I write the letters, for example, that we sent out are written centrally. A lot of our resources, like our posters, are developed centrally. Our leaflets, etc. So I try and support our schools as much as possible by uh, doing some of the work, which then gives them the time back to be able to actually work directly with the children and families. Thank you very much, Ian.